Yeah, look, first of all, great to have you on the podcast. Let's talk about those last two weeks in Sri Lanka before we talk about anything else. Brilliant yeah. couple of weeks, not just for you, but for the team as well. We were out there in full force, actually, last time, and that was successful as well. It's quite a happy hunting ground, Sri Lanka. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, it's gone very well. Um, we were really happy, obviously, with um, the 2-0 two, two series win. Um, and obviously, I guess the difference last time being kind of losing the toss twice in, in these games. And we know how important the, the toss can be. So um, I think last time we won all three tosses. So um, different in that way. But, um, you know, it was tough, really tough. Um, but we found a way and... Um, yeah, some great performances. Joe Root, obviously on fire. Um, absolute <laughs> masterclass. Um, and I'm just glad that um, he's shown how good he is um, because I bowl at him in the nets and I can't do it at all. So um, it um, just makes me feel a little bit better about myself as well. Um, but, um, yeah, no, it's been, it's been a brilliant start to this kind of, I guess, it's two tours, but a longer t- sort of tour away from home. And um, yeah, i uh, just really missed obviously having the Barmy Army there, obviously going back to school, love, loved playing there last time, but you realise how much of that was just the, the amount of England fans that were there. Um, and um, yeah, it's a beautiful place um, to play and obviously to probably watch from as well. And um, yeah, was, um, we have one, we had one fan there. I was going to say you had, Rand- you had Randy Caddick there. You know, that's, that's... Yeah. <laughs> he did us proud. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, he's um, well. We haven't been able to obviously meet him, but uh, I heard about him um, that he was out here and he'd been out here all the time. And um, yeah, obviously amazing effort. And um, yeah, we were we went um, after the game. We sort of walked towards the fort where he was watching from. <laughs> Gave him a little clap and uh, yeah, I think he's had a great time. So um, what a legend! We, we are the, the, the lads buzzing off him during the during the tour. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think he's been doing out here doing some DJing or something. So um, yeah, it's a mad story. And but to be honest, what's gone on in England? It's he's probably. Um, done all right he's probably done the right thing so um yeah he um i was just glad that he got to watch i I think there was some maybe difficulties to start with with him being able to like watch from the fort um because we weren't sure if you know the fort would be full of of people (laughs) yeah um obviously they were stopping mostly people um watching but it was funny like uh he was there and then there's, there was this one Sri Lankan fan as well, so they must have met yeah. one Sri Lankan fan as well. So, um, no, it was, it was um, great to see him kind of, I guess, all the time he's been here and um, to be able to watch us, obviously, that's what he wanted. So, um, yeah, it was a nice moment. And Ruti, when he got to his double hundred, like, um, you know, saluted him. and um, Outstanding. Yeah, that awesome. We're currently so good. that into the... Uh, High Commissioner of Chennai, who turns out is a Barmy Army member, which is the most bizarre thing in the world. Really? To, see, to see if we can get Randy over to Chennai on a reduced quarantine period, but it's, it's proven a bit more tricky, but we are working on it. <laughs> what, um, what's, his, what's his plan now? Do you know? Well, he's been, he's been chatting to me about it to India, in all serious. Um, but the, the difference is there's no forts in India, is there? So it's going to be a bit tougher to watch from outside the ground but he, he wants to come over whether he will or not that's another question but if not he's going to stay in Sri Lanka I said stay in Sri Lanka until maybe the ashes mate because <laughs> you might not be able to go to any cricket before but if there's cricket this summer he's coming home for it so he is going to come home is he yeah he is he is he'll be there he'll be there this summer at some point he's now he's now the Barmy Army's most famous fan so we've got to we've got to milk him while we can <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah, quality. He's done, he's done, he's proud. He's quality. Um, you sat in isolation then in India as we speak to you, uh, Jack. Bit of a cliche yeah. question, this one. And I, I'm going to allow myself to ask it, actually, if you don't mind. But, look, you've had a lot of time sort of sat in isolation and stuff. A lot of time to kind of think about 
um, the last year or so. I mean, look, it's been difficult for everyone, but for you, it's been even more because you've not played as much cricket as you would have liked. You've been ill and had all sorts of stuff going on. And, you know, where are you at? I mean, I'm guessing that Sri Lanka has helped enormously. Like, you must have just absolutely loved that because it was, you know, probably the best couple of weeks you've had for a long time. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think sort of learned to sort of take everything in, in your stride a little bit. Um, I think sort of even before, obviously, the pandemic and things, you know, probably looking back to New Zealand and South Africa was um, a really tough time. Um, and yeah, I guess it makes it all the more satisfying when you do um, sort of get to come back and, and sort of play um, play for England and it, it kind of makes it all that more special, I guess. But um, yeah, I think um, everyone's had it tough and, and I wouldn't want to kind of sit here and say, poor me or anything like that. I, I just am um, really happy that I've managed to get back out on the field. I, it was, I mean, I found it extremely tough and I did feel a little bit uh, rusty at times sort of searching for a bit of rhythm and, and that kind of thing that, you know, you can do all the practice you want in the nets um, but then you get into a game and it's like, God, I'm playing again. So, um, yeah, just that transition. But I feel really good for the two games and um, confidence um, is definitely getting there with, you know, taking wickets is um, a real confidence boost. Um, Brooksy, you said that to me last night, actually. So, um, yeah, Brooksy's given me all his wisdom and um <laughs> Yeah, just looking wow. forward to this series. I've got a huge knowledge of left arm spin, that's why. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, no. I think with, with Leachy, he's used to bowling a lot of overs and playing a lot of games, isn't he? And last year, you hardly played any cricket. You came back and played two games for Somerset at the back end of the year, but in one of those games, you hardly bowled as well, did you? Yeah. Um, and then obviously, uh, the winter before that, you had a bit of a tough time of it, didn't you? So it's been so long. It's going to take a little while to to feel like you're at your best, but it doesn't look like yeah. it doesn't look like you were bowling uh, as badly as you say. Well, but only you know that, don't you? So um, yeah, I it's guess it's, what it says, confidence, isn't it? Yeah, it's that um, sort of feel thing that I guess you want to be a little bit more. Um, you know, you know when the ball feels like it's coming out how you want it, and um, I, I think. Um, I was battling a little bit at times, but I think what's pleasing is that I've managed to sort of find a way to still be effective. And um, yeah, and, and obviously um, that's why we love cricket is a team sport. And actually um, if everyone's chipping in and everything, you know, um, it was a real team effort, I guess. And um, that's what it is in the subcontinent. So um, yeah, I, I feel um, really good to, to be back out playing and, um, just can't wait for hopefully some more. And Bessie as well, obviously, you know, the spin twins. That must have been, yeah. that must have been great, you know, because there wasn't, you know, when you were playing for Somerset together, you were sort of almost tussling for the same spot. But in the subcontinent yeah. playing for England, there's none of that, is there? You're basically a team and that's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. I think um, the last couple of years have been hard for me and him because we've kind of been fighting for a place in the Somerset team, in the England team, you know, and, um, you know, at times we're both not playing one day cricket for Somerset and we're fighting in the second team for a bowl. So, um, you know, we're kind of always um, together. And if there's only one spot in the team, it, it becomes a, a little bit hard. So, but, you know, the way this kind of all started, our kind of um, relationship and obviously, um playing together was when we were playing on those spinning wickets at Somerset. And um, so we reminded each other of that before um, the series started was actually, um, you know, we, we did really well together um, on those spinning wickets and hopefully um, this was a chance to kind of get back to doing that and, and working together. And um, yeah, it was, it was great to be out there sort of doing it for England together. Um, we really enjoyed that. Second nature for you boys, isn't it? Because you guys are used to the pressure of a fourth innings bowler team out or, you know, on spinning wickets when you're expected to get wickets. So when you come into the England team, you've already got that pressure experience, haven't you? Yeah, no, yeah. It's um, very good 
um, point. I think um, we we sort of learnt to sort of thrive on that at Taunton. Um, I remember the first time doing it and hating it. Um, I think it was a Surrey game, and um, bat. I think I got four wickets in the first innings, and then Batty got seven for thirty or something, and. Um, we were way behind first innings and, and then we actually chased down a decent total in the last innings. But I remember coming off in the third innings, having taken four for what I thought was too many runs. And um, I went, I, was, I got quite actually quite um, emotional because I thought oh, I've messed it up like for, for the team. And that, that for me was really hard to take and the pressure felt a lot. Anyway, I was out there at the end batting and, um, it turned into the best game ever because I managed to knock off um, 60 odd with Jamie O and um, Grunners towards the end. So like a great experience for me early on was that, you know, it's not always going to be perfect, but um, you know, that's what so good about the longer format of the game is um, you can have a couple of bad days, but um, you can still come out uh, on top. And um, I think I learned that, you know, if it doesn't happen for you uh, on a particular day of a game, that's why we love the game is we can come back the next day and put it right. So um, going into that last innings um, now, I kind of try to enjoy the challenge and think, right, this is my time to, to show what I can do. Um, knowing that like not always it's going to happen, but um, if you, if you do the right things, then actually um, there's no reason it can't. Is that is that not just more proof that you're an all-rounder as well? <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't feel like an all-rounder this this series, um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, you know, when you're a spinner, all you want to do is like whack the other team's spinner. So, <laughs> like, I don't want to be this guy who's thought of as um, solid, and um, you know, I, I feel like I've got a good defence against. Um, the seamers, but against um, spin, I just want to like run down or do something <laughs> stupid. So, um, yeah, I'm still that, that. Mate. I think that's how we got. <laughs> I um, yes, yeah, probably um, Brooksy, you, you're um, what's your game plan against spin <laughs> or, or against anything? <laughs> It's 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 it's, uh, it's a numbers game, isn't it? It's like block block whack or whack whack block or block, <laughs> whack block whack. Do you know what you're going to do before the over? Like what order it's going to go? In? <laughs> <laughs> whack whack block block. But that is that is so hard to bowl against. Their number ten um, for Sri Lanka got forty odd second innings, and yeah. it was really hard to bowl against because it was the unpredictability of is he going to come this ball or, you know, whereas like actually when batters play a bit more correctly on those spinning wickets, it can be a little bit easier to kind of get into a bit of a rhythm. So I think there's something in it. Um, so I might come up with how I'm going to face my first six balls next game. <laughs> <laughs> if you go block, whack, block, whack, block, whack, that's a good start. I think because you don't get lost then. I just told myself I'll be annoyed if I get out blocking it. So, because if I'm not looking to score, um, when I get out, then I'll be devastated. So I might just go whack, whack, whack. I'm going to be. I'm going to be so disappointed if we uh, if we're watching the first test against India and Leach comes out and blocks the first six that he faces. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, what's going on here? I 100 percent will as well. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I tell myself, right, good, like whack it. But then it just. <laughs> well, that's a... so good yeah to be fair I've been watching Pakistan South Africa this morning and the Pakistan their, their number 11 was just doing that and I think he was taking the whack 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 approach just absolutely clouting it Maharaj he was getting some right tap it was brilliant so good to watch <laughs> Um, so uh, look, um, we'll talk about England, India, and stuff in a minute, uh, Lee Chi. Just want to know a bit more about you, if possible. So, Brooksy, just before you came on, he described you as the Lord of Taunton, uh, just <laughs> part, part, partly because you're obviously born there, you've grown up there, you went to school there, worked there. We working in Sainsbury's or something? I've, I've heard on the Grapevine yeah. in Taunton. Yeah, that's right. So basically, you are just like the Taunton man. 
So, um, yeah, so talk, talk to me about it. I mean, well, yeah. Um, Bro- well, I think um, Brooks is basing that on when he's um, gone on a night out with me and um, <laughs> <laughs> I just basically go missing because, uh, like, I'll see someone, old, you know, an old friend from school and then, you know, you know I can't sort of, I'm not very good at sort of having a small conversation with someone and saying that I'm with these guys, I'm going <laughs> to, like... So I give, I try and give people um, a bit of time. So it was that so usually funny that night that. out though, wasn't it? It was a Chris, around yeah, Christmas it, time, and we went out as like a eight or ten of us or something in Taunton. and it was quite busy in most of the pubs and bars. Leachy wasn't drinking, but he came and joined us for a couple of hours. We went in one place and like he chatted to someone on the way in. He got caught chatting to someone at the bar in there, so we hardly spoke to him or saw him. And then we went on to the next place, bumped into someone outside a pub. We went and got around in. Leachy hadn't even come in when we left. <laughs> <laughs> Great night. Yeah. Leachy. Yeah. So um, it can be, um, it's, a, it's a good thing, but it can be a little bit challenging at times. But um, no, I, I think, um, and yeah, I worked at Sainsbury's during um, my time at college, which was um, good to experience, uh, I guess, the real world and, um, made me realise how much I wanted to play cricket. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like, um, Joss always jokes, actually, about um, saying that Brian Rose, who was director of cricket at Somerset at the time, um, you know, the, the the media have kind of talked about me play, uh, working at Sainsbury's and then becoming a professional cricketer. Like, I didn't play cricket at all before Sainsbury. So, um, <laughs> you know, he saw... He said that it was like there was... Um, some dried oats down on um, aisle 18 and that was like the rough. And then there was some, one of my work colleagues was batting with a celery stick and I, I was bowling with an orange and um, I saw this and, and, um, and oh, said, you, you know what, you can, you can bowl left on, <laughs> you can come play. But I was actually playing cricket before all this. So, um, but yeah, it was just a, a college job and um Joss says I have to call my book uh, Trolleys to Test Matches. So um, <laughs> yeah, nice. It might be called Trolleys to Test Matches Back to Trolleys, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, what made Lord Leach of Taunton go to minor counties then? Was it just because it was so difficult to get into the summer summer set side? And you had some really big success there. And I know Bessie, he played minor counties a bit as well, didn't he? Or came from minor yeah. counties. Yeah, well, Bessie's from Devon originally, and um, so he grew up playing for Devon. Um, for me, um, it was when we we had had quite a few overseas spinners: Murali Kartik, Abdurrahman, um, George Dock were also played. So, to start with, sort of opportunity wasn't um, there, and and I guess minor counties was a good way of um, getting lots of overs in, and and that's what you want when you're you're younger and and playing at Dorset. We played at uh, Dean Park in Bournemouth which was a really good spinning wicket and um, so yeah I got loads of overs in and um, sort of had some big wicket hauls which are kind of like your first experience of that really um, even playing second some set second team to start with we had quite a lot of um, experience within the team and so actually when you did play you might bowl a few overs and and not really get much chance to bat so minor counties kind of gave you an opportunity to have that responsibility I guess and um, yeah um, had some really good um, times with Dorset we won the championship the year that I played and um, yeah really enjoyed it and um, yeah it's a good social event as well playing minor minor counties. You have to play a lot with Max Waller at the Dorset. Uh, yeah, I did. I, he played in the final as well um, with me. So, um, yeah, no, yeah, we um, we played together. Can't get am, away I, from it. am I right in thinking yeah. that during the summer last year, um, or the, the, the Ashes year, that you did shoot off either before, during or after the Ashes and go and play a, a club game at some point? Yeah, so that was between... We played that Ireland game um, and... Oh, you got man of match when, batting. Oh yeah, well, if you want to mention it, then. <laughs> um, so played in that game, and then 
um, the first Ashes squad was announced, I wasn't in it. And it was during the one day cricket with Somerset and I wasn't um, in that. So I needed a game of cricket. So I went and played <laughs> with, uh, for Taunton Dean. Um, and uh, yeah, we um, had a good win on uh, that particular Saturday. And I felt the pressure actually, because the boys had been doing um, really well that year. And I thought if I come in and don't, and we don't win, it will look a bit um, not great. So anyway, um, and then um, following the first test, then um, got called up for the for the second test. So it was all a bit of a crazy time. And um, yeah, but um, a great time as well. So good. So hang on, you, you skipped over the batting, didn't you? So what's happened? What happened with the batting? Why aren't you talking about it? What, with the club game? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in the club, in the club, you know, man of the match for your batting. You know what happened? What happened there, Brooks? Against, Come on. against Ireland at Lords. Yeah, against got... Ireland. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but... yeah. Okay. Um, do you want me to talk you through ball by ball, or? <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> right, I'm out of it. Say like. <laughs> um, You've spoken up yeah. about Brooksy's hundreds and stuff, Leachy. So <laughs> you, your your time yeah. has come to shine. It. All right. I mean, I was absolutely. Um, buzzing with that I couldn't believe what happened really but um I was now looking back I'm a little bit frustrated that I didn't get eight more runs because like we went to play um we played at Lords in the final didn't we um Brooksy and and I just wish that like I'd got a hundred because then I could have literally pointed to that board every day and gone look at me up there. <laughs> it's um, been unbearable. the whole country was frustrated as well Oh, just, the, the whole cricket community was absolutely gutted. I know. And it's like, that's the thing about cricket is you always just want a little bit more. Like, I, I remember going off thinking, no, oh, I'll take that. Like, that's unbelievable. And um, the um, obviously, it was quite crucial actual innings in, in the game, it turned out. So um, I was really happy overall. Um, I would have taken it at the start of the day, but then you just think, just get your head down for a little bit longer. But I think um, the nerves were going definitely in the nineties. And when I sort of thought I was feeling really good and, and I remember thinking like all about these crazy shots I wanted to play, like Tim Murtaugh was bowling <laughs> and, and I was feeling really good. And I was like, I might sort of run down early, then he might dig it in and I'll whack it in the grandstand. Um, and, then, <laughs> and then I'll only be two runs away and I'll pop him over the top <laughs> into the, into the and, then I'll, and, and then I'll celebrate so um, yeah it was a good lesson for me was um, you know you need to stay in the moment and um, and then when you think two days two games later um, playing at Headingley like obviously that innings like I think that was the best thing about it was how in the moment I felt every every ball um, and I put such importance on every ball that um, that really helped me to get through um, through it and obviously Stokesy helped out along the way <laughs> Heading the innings in all seriousness, I've seen how hard you netted and worked on your batting for you know however long it was when I joined the club how serious you took your bat and obviously you took a, a blow to the bonce. Yeah, you, yeah. Which which you lost a lot of confidence from. But how hard yeah. you worked on it and you didn't shirk the tough stuff, like how much short ball practice you like Trez on the wang off or, or whoever, trying to whack yeah. you on the end all the time and how many blows you'd have taken. For someone to, to do that and earn a little victory from a little moment from the head of anything shows that you know, hard work and, and perseverance and a bit of focus, how far it can get you. Yeah, like I do, um, it did feel like a kind of reward for putting in all that work because um, I guess, and and I think the Ireland innings had a lot to do with it because I spent, forget the runs, I spent 180 balls or something out in the middle. And, and again, that you can't sort of substitute that. And um, then I remember sort of going out at Lords and you've got Hazelwood, Cummins, Stark or... And you're thinking, God, this is slightly different now. 
Um, I'll just whack them over. I'll bop him over mid on. I'll pit him into the Western <laughs> Terrace. I wasn't thinking that. I wasn't thinking that. <laughs> um, but um, I, um, I think the the thing for me was um, that I had a process then from that island innings that the work and I that I trusted that actually, however quick the bowling is, um, you can't react before. It, you see the ball coming out of their hands. So actually to, to trust yourself and stay still and, and then react. Um, and then that obviously um, really helped me in, in the rest of those, those games. And um, yeah, I loved, loved it. So it was, was the pressure on, you know, the Island test, were you thinking, hang on, I've got a club game coming up in a week or so, potentially here. Will, you know, <laughs> we, we, we a bit nervous thinking I might be bumped up the order. <laughs> um, no, I think, um, <laughs> no, I wasn't worried about that. But no. I did, and um, it was a, um, it was quite a low scoring game that, and I, I did bat three, I think. And I, you know, I think, I did actually manage because my ego was sort of telling me, you know, you've got to whack it, like, and you've got to get a um, hundred quickly or whatever. And I think <laughs> I got fifty, like, quite slowly. But I like we got up to like a hundred and fifty, and then they got a hundred all out or something like that. So, um, in terms of the game, again, it was a, I was like, I'm going to take some responsibility here. I think I was really enjoying my batting, and I was like, I'm going to play the proper innings and um yeah I was just really keen to do well for the lads because they won every game I think up to then and I was like oh, we are not losing this game. <laughs> <laughs> Leachy, what was what was your first taste of the Ashes like? You've obviously managed it. Have you played in anything like that before? Have you seen anything with such atmosphere around it? What was it like to be part of? Yeah, mate, absolutely incredible. I think that was Exactly. It was like the energy and atmosphere around the series. Um, I just loved and um, obviously the the sort of experiences of like the end of Headingley and things that, like, I don't think it will sort of get much better than that. But um, I just, yeah, loved the experience. And I think it does sort of... Um, spur you on to feel like ah, oh, you know the, when the ashes is on again I want to be part of that and um, so um, yeah I, I just loved the whole experience and um, it was a it was a great summer to be involved in. Obviously you develop yourself a bit of a cult reputation um, as well and, and look there was so much made you spoke about it all a million times before you know the spec savers thing is that real do you actually get lifetime supply? Is that a genuine thing or was it just a thing that they tweeted on the day? Um, yeah, no, I think it's genuine. Um, they, I think they, they um, like it's one pair a year, I think. Nice. Um, it's better than no for, pairs a year. For the rest of my life, I think. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very so kind good. of them. Um, it, going back to that that Headingley match quickly, um, obviously it would have been mad, and that like, was the greatest single you got in cricket, and you got to witness one of the most epic innings and finishes to a game. Like I was playing in a President's game for my village side at the time. We came off with about thirty runs required. To everyone wanted to cram in and watch the end of that innings. It was getting to be a tasty run show. Stokes on fire, and then your single, but the thing that made me laugh was how much Joss stuffed you out of sight when he videoed your single afterwards when you're having beers on the pitch and it goes, <laughs> it goes viral. Because I know how much you hate tension and things like that, and that would have absolutely killed you. <laughs> I remember I was in um, the old creamery furniture shop in Taunton when I realised <laughs> it on, on to, um, when it had got onto social media. And I like, I like had that horrible feeling in my like stomach where I was just like, Oh my God, like what is going to happen here? Um, and luckily everyone loved it, <laughs> but um, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't do it um, for like it to get out. It was just, we were, um, you know, Ruti wanted us to go out for a, a drink after the game and just sit on the, by the wicket and, and sort of take in what had happened. 
Um, and uh, yeah, everyone laughs about how I obviously run like I sort of run like a weirdo. Um, and it just, um, so they wanted me to sort of do an impression of it, and then it got filmed. And then I just, and I text Josh saying like, "Who did you send it to? Like, is is, get, is someone sent it to me on WhatsApp or something?" And then um, yeah, quickly it was all over social media. So. Um, not, yeah, I was devastated, but um, once I saw that people were sort of reacting quite well to it, I was like, okay, maybe it's all right. Um, but then, yeah, it, it was all good. Cult hero status now. What's it like being a cult celebrity? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, I don't really um, think it's like that. But um, <laughs> I mean, I said during it, I think, is that Bessie? Yeah, He's right, in. Man. Oh, hi, mate. Thought I'd say hello. How's it going? <laughs> Got to create a bit of racket. Yeah, good. I thought I'd done something wrong and like um, <laughs> FaceTime you or something. Um, but um, yeah, I um, I think it's just the bald head and the glasses like that people quite um, enjoyed about it. And, um, you know, there's something very clubby about it and, and people could relate. <laughs> We love a good clubby. Yeah. <laughs> Don Bess, how are you, pal? Yeah, good, lads. Good. Sorry, I joined in and I said hello, but I guess Leachie was midway through um, talking, so I do apologise for that. Yeah, he was only talking uh, about the famous Headingley story. It wasn't, you know, one of the better stories just or anything. A, just, Don't worry just about a it. a big Don. one, Bessie. One of the greatest stories in English cricket, that, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> the, be the best part of the story is the fact that he was in a furniture shop when he found out <laughs> how well we got the spin twins on now then we could have a bit of banter with the uh, England's Woody, tweakers Woody calls us the Taunton Twizzlers nice <laughs> I, I like that that's good that's got a bit of a ring to it hasn't it oh, Bessie do you like that Bessie's still hanging love. on to the Taunton vibes. Then. No, well, I love that, but I feel like I'm going to have to be the Headingley Holden now. <laughs> <laughs> at, le at least you sound less like a strip club than the Headingley Holder. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> oh, quality. Uh, I love it. Um, are, you, are you anywhere near each other in the hotel? In the, are your rooms anywhere near, or do you not have a clue? What's going on? Uh, I want to say that Leachy's probably got the the best suite in the palace up top and I'm probably down near the kitchens I reckon oh, yeah. uh, quite, quite far away I'm, fi I'm 506 what are you? 529 so actually probably closer than I thought <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that lads we can get all our podcast listeners to send stuff to your room then anyway perfect <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that you didn't think that one through did you? No, um, so. um Bessie, um, loved your honesty post Pfeiffer in that first game, by the way, when you were talking, saying that you bowled absolute dross when actually you're walking off with five poles. Um, have you, I mean, what a tour, what a couple of weeks that was for you. Yeah, it's been good, mate. Um, yeah, a bit of honesty I had to probably be out there. Probably didn't bowl the best I, I know I could. Um, I know I certainly got some flat for it, but at the end of the day, I've taken five and more importantly, lads have won. We got off the field, more importantly, mate, because we, <laughs> we saw second game, it was flat as anything. All the seamers took the poles. So, um, <laughs> to be fair, mate, uh, yeah, it was, is what it is, but I think certainly both of us found, certainly felt like we both found our rhythm second, uh, second ins and second game, actually. Um, we, we certainly had a couple of chats, didn't we, Nut? Um, come first in into the second game, which was good. Like, it was good to sort of get, get a, I guess, get our heads back into it. Um, but now we're sort of sat in quarantine. I think we need a couple more of them to get us through. <laughs> <laughs> who, who was the hardest fella to bowl at, lads, between the two of you? Um, um, Matthews, the number 10. Number 10 spinner. Oh, my God. And oh. Bedley, he's an absolute go, isn't he? <laughs> oh, left arm Twizzler skids them on, spins them, and then whacks it. <laughs> God. I think um, Matthews for me. Yeah. I think um, I he stays, um, yeah, he's a good player of spin, and I've found him both tours now that I've been here. I've, 
I can't work it out really. Um, but um, yeah, no, he's he's tough uh, to bowl at. He sort of stays leg side of the ball, and um, he's also sort of hanging back. So you feel like your length has to be spot on. And um, yeah, that's that. I find that challenging. He hates England as well, doesn't he? He like really raises his game when he plays England. Loves it. Yeah, that hundred <laughs> yeah. played beautifully. Like the hundred he got, I thought he was like re- like he comes out and you can see sort of the class in him. He, you feel like you're bowling good lengths to him, and he just like sits on you and like punches you or cuts you, and you just and then you end up bowling half volleys to him because you think you're short on him. And yeah, he's he's a proper player. Yeah. What about Randy Caddick, Dom? Were you loving Randy Caddick? He's yeah, up your street. Mate, isn't he? that was that was class room actually. He was mate, how he had a voice second test, I don't know. He was screaming from the like screaming from the top of the fort, which was good. Um and again we I we just appreciate that sort of um well, we certainly appreciate the commitment that he's done, but more, I think it's just a great story, isn't it? The fact that he's sort of held on and then he was able, we could get him in, obviously, on top of the forks. I know he was struggling sort of first day. I know Rubes did a good job with him, but um, to get him up there. But, mate, he was so, so good. And again, like, even though it was one bloke, you don't underestimate, like, how much he sort of brought. Um, he was up there every morning, obviously singing Jerusalem. Um, and mate, it was class. It was class just to see him up there, um, and like all the lads really appreciated it. Yeah, we've been up there, Chris, haven't we, on that top of that fort, and to be heard singing Jerusalem from the ground. It's a proper effort. It must have a right set of pipes on him. We didn't ask him about that when we spoke to him the other day, did we? But yeah, he was mega, absolutely mega. Um, are you bored in isolation? Are you missing your dog? I'm not talking about Brooksy. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm glad I got that old dog out of the way so I can get the new one in. <laughs> no, yeah, mate, I've just been, i tell you what, I've had probably about a four and a half hour stint on Call of Duty. So, um, yeah, I've Ooh. just come on, I was just on with um, Popey, Folksy and um, Ollie Robinson. So it's been quite good fun that. Um, just ordered my lunch and then, yeah, just been on with you boys. So it's been actually a top draw morning. Is there anyone That's... in the team that doesn't play Call of Duty now? Or are you all just like the man? The man here. Nice. Yeah, I don't play. Lee, what do you Lee. do then? What do you do instead? Netflix. I do a bit of reading. Does a bit of mirror bowling um, with an orange. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a bit of mirror bowling. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I just I don't know. I don't know what I do. Like I, sometimes these days, you don't really do anything, but. You basically you're watching shit on. Oh, sorry, on TV. Can't say what you, want. you can say what you want on it. It's no, fine. it's okay. It's okay, okay Let's see. Talk to us. Um, you, I know you told me briefly yesterday, but talk to us about your chats with Dick Weller, which were picked up on the uh, Sky mics. Yeah, I I really enjoyed him. Um, he kept. Yeah, he was. It was good fun, mate. Yeah, he was. Um, what was he doing? Well, the first thing he was doing, he was. He was like moving the bales. So like he was moving the stumps really wide. So they were like the wobbliest things in world cricket. Honestly. And I was like, like, what's going on here? I'm not facing up until these are all right. Like, honestly, he just kept going with the stumps and it was doing like, I was like, look at him. He was smiling like it was nothing. And I know he got, I think he got told off by, um, by Kumar in the end. Um, And then there was that massive, uh, one of the um, birds were out on the, uh, out in the field at like extra cover and he was sort of saying that it was obviously one of the fielders and I was like mate that's that Crawley like me and Rooty were like <laughs> Rooty kept saying every time he's like get Crawley off the field You're supposed to be batting here <laughs> so just like general I know um, I know he was sort of badgering I think Rooty for a bat or Johnny for a bat can't remember yeah. who and he was asking Sibs obviously um, about the tour of India I think but he mate I think he he played it and he was he was good fun, that was for sure. I thought he was uh, he certainly made me laugh. Was it tasteful? Like actually quite tasteful. To be fair, I, I on that as well, I also saw Rooty's sledge where he sledges Chandimal, doesn't he? Um, yeah. and that was great. Who was bowling well, then? Was but... it one of you two was bowling, was yeah, it? Yeah, it was Leach, I think. Was it Leach? Well, brilliant. It was um it was when he uh 
what happened. It was when he, he skied one in the end that he like a heavy slog sweep and then I think Rooty was banging on about going for another massive shot and then he just whacked one straight <laughs> up in the air. It was quite funny. <laughs> Jimmy took that good catch a bit on, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Great. Did you get involved in any of that, you two? I mean, it's difficult, isn't it, I suppose, on their own patch, especially when they're as lively, but or you just stand and observe Leachy. I mean, I mean, what were your thoughts when you heard Joe saying that kind of stuff to him? Um, yeah, well, I was just trying to focus on landing it in a decent place. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, it's nice when the lads are kind of, um, I don't know, creating that theatre around the bat um, on, on those kind of wickets. I think it um, adds just a little bit more and... Um, yeah, if they can, if we can sort of get under their skin and and make them feel that pressure a little bit more, um, then it definitely makes our um, decent balls look even better. So, yeah, I think it's um, a good thing. I I feel like I need to concentrate on what I'm trying to do, um, and um, yeah, but the, the lads can crack on. I think Bessie's probably better at dishing it out than me. <laughs> How, how excited are you for the um, battles against India then, chaps, with obviously a very strong side and you, you're even going to play at the biggest ground in the world with no one there, aren't you? <laughs> be like yeah, Taunton, that. Bad, isn't it? <laughs> Taunton and Vale. <laughs> we know plenty of them, plenty of those days. Christ. <laughs> yeah, What's... no, I think it's, I, I think for my side, it's obviously, well, hopefully, obviously, it'll be a really exciting challenge. I think you look at you obviously always say the Ashes is a really big, um, obviously probably the biggest challenge for an Englishman. But I also think you certainly look how India played over in Australia and how dangerous they are. Like they've gone to Australia, beaten them, um, even with obviously resting a load of lads. Like the quality that the Indians have got is phenomenal. So I think for us as well, obviously going to their conditions, I think it's going to be a really, really tough um, trip. But I think where we are as a squad, where we are um, players, confidence levels, I think we've got a great, we've got a great opportunity, I think, to really um, smash it, certainly out here. And I think obviously having actually no crowd, I think it's going to obviously help us in terms of making it probably a little bit more of a level playing field. Um, but again, I think more the challenge of um, seeing where you are as well um, against some of the world's best players, if not best players against spin, I think is a is obviously um, you can see it from two different directions. I think you got to see it from a great like opportunity, um, exciting challenge. That if it goes right, um, it's only good, and obviously um, it's going to be one hell of a challenge. So whatever sort of gets thrown, um, I guess our ways, you've just got to take it in your stride. And and I know from myself, and I know I will know Leach as well. The fact I think we're going to be really excited by the challenge. Leachy, what about yourself? Are you looking forward to it and uh, having a few tussles with you know Rahane and Coley and the like? Yeah, I think um, it's going to yeah, like Bessie said, um, it's going to be very exciting. Um, and they've obviously had a great result in Australia. It's um, funny we were watching a lot of the Australia India stuff and. Um, we all we all wanted India to win um, just because of how we feel about the Aussies, but um, actually we were thinking then sh actually we've got to play India away away from home, you know, and they're going to be full of confidence. Like surely we should be supporting Australia, but um, I think that's just that um, you know that rivalry between England and Australia that um, is always there. So. Um, yeah, they, they've got um, some exciting players and, and sort of players that play with no fear. So um, it's going to be really exciting. Um, and we've got a great squad. Um, and we've got some players to come back as well. Obviously, Joff, um, Stokesy, Burnsy, Popey, these guys are... Uh, and Mo, obviously, who was out in um, Sri Lanka and um, has um, come back. Um, now with us and, and is is bowling well so um, yeah um, I think we're in a great place to to take them on and, and give it our best shot for sure Bessie uh, Leachy said he's not um, been to India before it's his first time he's been a first experience but you've been on camps and, and stuff before haven't you 
Yeah, I went I went on camp last year to Mumbai and I went to where did we play? We played real south um in like a Lions trip, but again was I think getting to realise actually how tough it is playing in India. Um so again I think it's gonna be another kettle of fish obviously playing the national side. Um but certainly those experience I think will be um will keep me sort of, I guess, having half an idea of what, what's going to come. Um, but, mate, I think it's such an exciting such an exciting trip to be on. Um, I don't know about you lads, obviously, back home, but I'd certainly rather be here than, than back home. Oh, mate, absolutely. Yeah, you do right. You do right. Um, gents, absolute pleasure. We'll let you crack on with, your, with the rest of your, I mean, we've got, really we've got busy to ask days. one more question, Greg. Go on. Go. go on, obviously. what's that question? Back in the UK next year, your first year apart in God knows how long. Leachy, are you going to miss him? Bessie, are you looking forward to it? <laughs> I Yeah, definitely going to miss him. Um, it's been great, obviously, since um, obviously Bessie decided that he's moving up north um, to be able to sort of be back together so soon um, has been great. And um, yeah, I think you made the move yesterday, didn't you, Bessie? Did it go all right? <laughs> He didn't. Yeah, mate. It was. Do you know what? It was real tough. Real tough, actually. <laughs> Poor old baby. Um, that's it all herself. Yeah. Big up thieves. And but, mate, Bernie. Bernie would have done a lot as well. He would have <laughs> shoveled in all the boxes. That's my dog, obviously. But yeah, mate. I think um, it's going to be really strange. I think, obviously, uh, exciting for myself, but um, hopefully, hopefully. Um, how it's how it's sort of gone. Obviously, with the English side, we we can sort of go and play our domestic stuff now and then join back up internationally and, do you know what I mean, work from there. I think it's, I think Sri Lanka started off really well and hopefully if India goes well, um, we can sort of be, I guess, fighting on the scene for England and working together and actually building um, a bit of a reputation, hopefully, in the international scene. I'll wait for your Yorkshire Somerset game. Hopefully for the Bob Willis or the Championship, bit of, bit of banter, big game on the line. Huge, mate. I'm coming for both of you as well. <laughs> so well, especially you, Brooksy. All those times I've had to bowl at you, and you would go, "Who's going? Who's getting dinner? If we get you out, I've got to come for you there." Mate, I'm I'm, I'm not going to make any eye contact with you if we ever play because I know for a fact one of us will end up bursting out into. It's I'm more, mate. Genuinely, I'm worried about nut just sliding one onto my pads as well. <laughs> <laughs> like he got me in the practice game, absolutely hoofed it as well. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, nah, uh, cheers, yeah. lads. Um, yeah. Hopefully, it's killed a little bit of isolation time for you. But thanks very much for yeah. sparing some time. Enjoy yeah, no yourselves. Worries. Enjoy yourselves. Thanks for coming on, lads. Really appreciate it. Leachy, good to talk to you. Bessie, good to see you you again, mate. Cheers, fellas. Good luck next week, boys. Yeah, go well. Enjoy. Good luck. Come on, England.